Thank you very much. I, <coughs> give you the, I give you the greetings of uh, Islam. We say, Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto all of you. So, peace be unto all of you. I'm really, very really pleased to be here this afternoon. And I hope I can give you some uh, facts and clarify some myths that exist in the minds of the people. Uh, <clears throat> about Islam and Muslims. Uh, first of all, I, I want to express our deep uh, sympathy and our sorrow about what happened in Japan. Uh, our, um, the Muslim community up here, Orange County as well as in the United States, uh, they sent a mission immediately after that for helping the people. And yesterday, one of my friends he returned from there and he explained, he said that whatever you saw on the television, whatever you read on the newspaper is nothing. I mean, it's only maybe 5% of what exists there. It's, it's, it's a very, very sad situation. And people are going through a lot of pain, a lot of difficulty. So we pray to God to help them. And, <clears throat> and uh, all people have to see what we can do uh, to, to relieve this suffering. Because whenever there is suffering, uh, our uh, religion teaches us that wherever the human beings suffer, it is the duty of all human beings to do something for them and to, to take care of them. This may be a test for all of us, that what we do. So let's go back to the thing. What I'm going to do is uh, to give you basic uh, things about Islam and then after that say a few things about some of the misunderstandings and then uh, we'll try and take some questions. Uh, uh, and uh, see what myths are there in the minds of the people, what you think you uh, have, something, questions you have, because so I can be relevant to all this thing, what is going on. So first, uh, let's uh, start with the name, uh, basic, uh, basic terms, um, the name of the religion. So first of all, uh, as for the name, Islam is the name of the religion. 
So the name of the religion is Islam. Uh, sometimes people say Islam, but it is Islam, soft S. And uh, it comes from the word Salam. I told you, Salam Alaikum, peace be unto you. So Salam means peace. And it all no, not only means peace, but also it means wholesomeness, being complete without any uh, problems, without any difficulties. So it's wholesomeness. And it is very much similar to the Hebrew word Shalom. So Salam and Shalom are similar, coming from the same Semitic roots. And from this comes the word Islam. Islam means uh, uh, giving yourself totally. So Salam is total, being full. Islam is giving fully. And that means also submission. So giving yourself fully to God. God has given you your being, your existence. And now you yourself are submitting to God and saying, I am going to live by your will, by your command. Whatever you tell me, I live. You gave me freedom and I submit my freedom to you. So that's the meaning of that, it's submission. Submission of the whole self to God. Or could be the following the path of peace. Islam is living, following the path of peace. So this is the name that comes from the Quran. It's not that Muslims coined this name or somebody else gave this name, but actually it is mentioned in the Quran itself. And the Quran says that God gave this way to all the prophets. So all the prophets from the very beginning, they were teaching Islam. So Islam is the, the, the way of life. So Islam did not start 1400 years ago, but Muslim understanding is that from the very beginning. So it is the most ancient religion according to our understanding. Because every prophet from Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, this, all of them said, submit to God, obey God. So in that sense, everything. And then not only that, Muslims believe that the whole universe submit to God. Sun and moon and the stars and the oceans and the trees and the mountains, everything obeys God. So in that sense, there is Islam in the whole universe. The whole universe is Muslim. So everything is Muslim. The only thing is that human beings, they are given the freedom. Some of them they accept, some of them don't. So God has given them the freedom. But everything in the universe follows the rules of God. The sun cannot move without God's rule. The moon cannot do that. Everything is under divine plan, under divine organization, and they follow that. So that's uh, another aspect of Islam. Muslim is a person who says Islam is his or her religion. It's a very simple kind of definition. Muslim, literally the Muslim means a person who submits to God or follows the path of peace. That's what literally it means. But some Muslims don't, and some Muslims do. So that doesn't mean that every person who says, uh, I'm Muslim, exactly follows the path of peace, or exactly submits to God. Some of them are Muslim because their parents are Muslim. Some of them are Muslim because this is the way how they grew up in the culture. So uh, just like Christian, not every Christian follows the way of Christ. Some of them, they don't, but they call themselves Christian. Not every Jew follows the way of Moses <laughs> or exactly follow all the rules. Some of them, they are just because their mother gave them birth. So the mother is Jewish, so they are Jewish, they are Jews. So that's uh, the way it is. They are, uh, some Muslims are Muslims only in name. But we don't have a, we cannot judge everybody and say, no, you are Muslim, you are not Muslim. Yesterday you were Muslim, today you are not Muslim. I mean, this becomes very difficult to do that. So what we say, anybody who says Muslim, Muslim. If somebody say, I'm a Muslim, okay, you are Muslim. So we cannot go on and check every person's background and define, this is Israel Muslim or not Muslim. That's why I would say Islam is not whatever Muslims do. Islam is what Muslims should do, isn't it? 
Would you say, say the same thing about Christianity? Christianity is not what every Christian does. Christianity is what they should do. I mean, if, uh, if a Christian does not uh, love his neighbor, won't you, you won't say that this is a Christian way of hate. <laughs> you can simply say that this is not following the Christian way. But there are some Christians who love their neighbor, some Christians don't. <laughs> So it is the same way some Muslims follow, but we cannot say everything that Muslims do is Islam. So what is the problem? The problem is that sometimes people see that a Muslim is doing some violence, the Islamic violence, Islamic terrorism, hmm? Islamic this, Islamic that. They use the word Islamic very easily. If a Jew does something wrong, they don't say Judaic terrorism, don't say that. Or if a Christian does something wrong, they won't say, it's a Christianity is terrorism. No, it's not Christianity is terrorism. It is that person's terrorism. It's that person's mistake. So it's, but very often people use this word Islamic very easily. So it's very important to keep that in mind, the difference between Islam and Muslim. Islam is whatever what Muslims should do, not whatever Muslims do. So this is very important to keep that, that distinction in the mind. Many people don't have that distinction. Now there are about 1.5 billion Muslims in the world. So Islam is the second largest religion. Christianity is uh, almost 2 billion. And Muslims are about 1.5 billion. Uh, in almost every country. So Muslims are not Arabs. Actually, of all the Muslims of the world, there are only about 20% are Arabs. 80% are non-Arabs. 80%. We have the largest number of Muslims in Southeast Asia. Pakistan, India. India has uh, Indonesia. Indonesia has the largest number of Muslims in the world. Second after that is India. India is predominantly Hindu, but there are a very large number of Muslims, almost 200 million Muslims in India. And then Bangladesh and <coughs> Pakistan and uh, this whole area. So you can see that almost one third of the Muslims of the world are in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Malaysia, all that area. That's one third of the Muslims, of, almost 500, 600 million Muslims live there in that area. So uh, <clears throat> here in the United States, there are about six to seven million Muslims. And they are from all over. <clears throat> they are not all Arabs, they are not all Indians or Pakistanis. They are from all different countries. 60% uh, are immigrants from all over the world. 60%. 40% are local people, Americans born and raised in America, and most of them are Afro-Americans, black Americans who have accepted Islam for various reasons. So they are Afro-Americans, they are Latinos, there are many Latinos who are Muslims, and there are other ethnic groups, some white, people of white race, many other people also. So you have a mixture of people of, who are Muslims in America, as I said about 40% are local people. 60% uh, are immigrants who come from other countries. And uh, this will give you an idea about the Muslims of the world. Uh, this area which you have dark green is predominantly Muslim. See that? This whole area. Here are the countries that have more than 50%. Each country has 50 or more. Some of them have 90%. Some of them maybe 100%. Muslim population, here also. This is the Indonesia, this is the, the area that has largest number of Muslims in these islands. And then you have here. So you can see that uh, Africa, all, this, this also, these are like 50% or more and these are a little less than 50%. India, you know, all of this, and Central Asia, China and all of these things. Uh, so, and Africa. But you can see that 60 to 65% of Africa is Muslim. 
So this is the continent that's almost all the continent is the Muslim continent, Africa. Because it has a great uh, history of a relationship between Arabia and Africa. And then you have here almost 2% or a little less than 2% in the United States, this thing, and then Canada also has a small population. And in South America, we have Muslims. So the Muslim population and Muslims are here also. This is the Guiana, British Guiana, and uh, Colombia and other places. So uh, it's the Muslims are not a one ethnic group. Muslims are not of people of one color or one race or one nationality. They speak different languages, different colors. So there's a lot of diversity among Muslims. And one should not lump all the Muslims into one group and say Muslims are that the people of that area. The majority of the people, majority of the Arabs are Muslims. I would say 90% of the Arabs are Muslims. But the majority of the Muslims are not Arabs. Okay? I'll explain that already, about 80% of the Muslims are not Arabs. I'm not an Arab. I was born and raised in India. So, and there are many people like that, so many people here. What are the basic sources of Islam? Where from we learn Islam? We learn from the Quran and the Sunnah. The Quran is the word of God. We believe that it is the word of God. It is the word that Prophet Muhammad uh, received it from the divine. So Prophet Muhammad was born in year 570 of the common era. And at the age of 40, he had the experience that God spoke to him. And uh, made him as his prophet. And he started preaching the message. And uh, at different times in that period, he, he died at the age of 63. So from 40 to 63, during this period, 23 years, whatever experience of revelation he had, all of these are put together and this is Quran. So at different times, he heard the divine word through the angel, Gabriel. And he would sometimes it quiet down and then after that he raised his head, he said, God sent me an angel and he spoke to me. And these put words were put together into one book. And this book is called the Quran. Quran has, is in Arabic language, it's very beautiful Arabic, very melodious. He chanted, you know, very nicely he chanted. A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Deen Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem Sirat Al-Lazina An'amta Alayhim Ghayri Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Walad-Dalleen this is the first chapter of the Quran. It's called, it's called Surah Al-Fatiha. Opening chapter, it's also our prayer. So we say this every day. We have this prayer. We say that just like Lord's Prayer in Christianity. So we have this prayer, Surah Al-Fatiha. It says in the name of God, the most merciful, the compassionate. Uh, praise be to God, the Lord of the worlds. The most merciful, the most compassionate, master of the day of judgment. You we worship. Your help we seek. Guide us into the straight way. The way of those whom you favored. Not the way of those who went wrong. And those who incurred the anger. So these are, this is the short prayer that every Muslim is supposed to say every day. And repeat it several times. So this is the, and this is the first chapter of the Quran. Some of the chapters are short and some of them are long. This is a very short one, only seven verses. But some of them are like 286 verses and more. So this is long chapters and short chapters. Altogether, there are 114 chapters in the Quran. And its language is very, very beautiful. 
very melodious and it is very profound. Uh, so it is, has many translations. It's originally in Arabic, but it is translated because a lot of people are not Arabs, so they need translation. So the Quran is translated into many languages, hundreds of languages is translated. And uh, there are some very good uh, English translations, the Chinese translation, Japanese translations, and many other uh, Taiwanese translations. Yeah, there are translations in different languages available. So you have some translations in different languages. Uh, the Sunnah is, uh, the, it means tradition. Sunnah means tradition. So we believe that Prophet Muhammad, uh, he received the word of God, but then he explained the word of God. And he told the people how to, to follow the word of God, how to live your life. So whatever he, Prophet Muhammad said, whatever he did, and whatever he approved, all this is Sunnah. Uh, the Sunnah is in the books of Hadith. So there are books called Hadith books. In the Hadith we have the Sunnah of the Prophet. And uh, there are many books of Hadith. So the Sunnah is, is in various volumes. And uh, there are thousands of Hadiths of the Prophet. So this, this, this is a very important source and there are many collections in Arabic and also translations in different other languages. So Muslims have very very carefully preserved the word of God, the Quran and the words of the Prophet. But they don't mix the word of the Prophet with the word of God. The word of Prophet is separate, word of God is separate. The word of God is Quran. Word of the Prophet is Sunnah, Hadith. And uh, all Muslims agree on the Quran. There is no difference among Muslims about Quran. The text of the Quran is the same. Wherever you go, you go to China, you go to America, you go to Arabia, you go to India, you go to Africa, any place, any masjid you enter, you will find a copy of the Quran exactly the same. No difference in Arabic. But there are many interpretations. When it comes to the interpretations, yeah, there are many interpretations. Interpretations of the classical, interpretations that are modern, interpretations that are, that are uh, very conservative, interpretations that are liberal. So there are all kinds of interpretations. And some we agree, some we don't agree. Uh, the translations are also there. Some are good translations, some are bad translations. It all depends who is translating it. So, but, and the same thing also we have Arabic, we have books of Hadith. They are in Arabic and they are also available in translations. And they are explanations of Hadith. So you have a lot of material to work on. And these are our, our sources. From these sources we work and we study Islam. And on this basis you can say, so people go through a lot of training. When, the, when somebody wants to become an Imam, when somebody wants to become a religious scholar, they have to study the Quran, they have to study the Hadith, they have to study all of that. And spend years and years in the study of that. What are the Muslim beliefs? Just briefly. I, mean, I can give you the whole semester on that. But I'm going very, very shortly, I'm telling you. Uh, first thing and most important thing is belief in God. One cannot be Muslim without believing in God. Because Islam means submission to God. So belief in God is very, very important. And uh, we say in Arabic, Allah. But Allah is not our, our special God. Allah, you have in the Hebrew language, in the Old Testament, they say Elohim. In the, in the Aramaic language, in the New Testament, they say Allah. So Allah, Elohim and Allah are very similar. Coming from the same root. So Allah is very similar to Judeo-Christian deity. And actually, there are millions of Christians who are Arabs. In Syria, in Lebanon, in, in Egypt. 
in Jordan and many other places. There are millions of Arab Christians, that is, they are Christians, but they speak Arabic language. In their churches, when they speak about God, what do they say? Allah. When they translate the Bible into Arabic language, on every page you see Allah. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, Allah created the heaven and the earth. That you will find it in the Bible. So, some people get very confused in their mind. They think Muslims worship Allah, while Allah is not a God. They say Allah is moon God, something like that. You will find that some people are making this kind of myth, this propaganda, that Muslims don't worship God. They worship some kind of a moon god. Why? Because they, sometimes they go to the mosque and they see a crescent there. On the top, they say, oh, so this must be moon god. Just like some Christians have a symbol of fish. So somebody say, most Christians worship fish. <laughs> they don't worship fish. It's a symbol. And actually, a crescent is, you will never find a crescent inside the mosque. So we don't consider a crescent as a sacred symbol. It's not a sacred symbol. It's not like cross for Christians. It's a social symbol. It's a national symbol, something like that. Some countries use it, some countries don't use it. Some Muslims use it, some Muslims don't use it. So, uh, it is the same God, you, you, say, you can say in English, God. Same thing. Allah is God, with the capital G. Capital G, not a small g. Huh? Why, why not a small g? Because we believe only in one God. The Supreme Being. We don't have many Gods. The Supreme God. So, it is the one, one in person and unique in being. Same as recognized by all monotheists. So, those who believe in only one God, like Christians and Jews, yeah, same God. There is no difference. The Quran says that. Our scripture, the Quran says that, say to the Christians and Jews, your God and our God is one and the same. So we believe in one and the same God. The second thing is we believe God is universal. God is not uh, in Arabia only or in Pakistan only or in some other place. God is the universal God, the God of all people. And He is the creator of heaven and earth. Everything visible and invisible. That's, that's what is emphasized in the Quran again and again. That He is the powerful over everything. He created the heaven and the earth and all that is in between. And nothing except created by God. God is transcendent. What do you mean by transcendent? Transcendent means that God is not a, an animal. God is not a human being. God is not a mountain. God is not a river. God is not a star, sun or moon. God is beyond that. God is the creator of everything. And God does not become a human being. God does not become an animal. God does not become a tree. So we don't believe that. We believe that the God and then everything other than God. We can, of course, all the things can point to God. So they become the signs of God, but they are not God. Every human being, all of you are signs of God. That means every human being, you look at the every human being and say, wow. God created this person, God created this person, God created this person. But none of these are gods. We don't believe that any person is God. So everything in the heaven and the earth is the sign of God, but not God. God is beyond that. So uh, there, is, uh, um, there is no one who is equal to God. And there is not two gods. One is God and there is one who is like God. So there is no co-equal. God is also immanent. God is very close to every person. God is very close to every person. And also there are many beautiful names and attributes of God. So how to understand Muslims' understanding of God? If you really want to know what Muslims say about God, study the names of God that Muslims use. And what kind of qualities they speak about God. What characters God have. What qualities God has. So we believe that there are many, many qualities. You cannot define them. You cannot put them. But in the Quran, you will have many beautiful names of God. 
and some of the beautiful names of God. <laughs> See that? There are 99 beautiful names of God. And 99, why 99? To give you an idea that many. 99 is not a, a, an exhaustive number. So you cannot just round it up and say, okay, 100. No. It's 99. <laughs> But rather say 99, that means there are many. Because there are some names that we know and some names that we do not know. God's names are many. The Quran says, if all the oceans become ink and all the trees become pen, God's names will not be exhausted. The ink will be finished, the pen will be finished, not God's names. God is infinite. God is inexhaustible. So God is majestic, great, beautiful. That's what we believe in God. So we, compassionate, merciful, king, holy, source of peace, giver of faith, protector, strong, almighty, majestic, creator, maker, fashioner, forgiver, dominant, bestower, provider, reliever, knowing, bestrainer, extender, humbler, exalter, empowerer, humiliator. All hearing, all seeing, the judge, the just, the kindly one, the gracious, the clement, the mighty, the forgiving, the grateful, the high, the sublime, the great, the preserver, the protector, the sustainer, the, rede the, the reckoner, the sublime, the beautiful, the gracious, the bountiful, the gracious, the watcher, the responsive, the infinite, the wise, the loving, the glorious, the resurrector. And and this, this is the place, if you really want to know what Muslims believe about God, read these names. We study them. And we reflect on them. And a lot of Muslims, they take their names from these names. So you have Allah. People add before that Abd, and they say Abdullah. Hmm? The servant of Allah. Ar Rahman, Abdul Rahman. Abdul Rahim, Abdul Malik, Abdul Quddus, Abdul Salam, Abdul Mu'min, Abdul Muhaymin, Abdul Aziz, Abdul Jabbar, Abdul Mutakabbir. So you have a lot of people, they take their names, just add before that Abd. Abd means servant. The servant of Allah, the servant of the Great One, the servant of the Creator, the servant of the Forgiving, the most servant of the Merciful. So you have a lot of names. This is the way you, people take their names. So once you see a person say Abdul something, now you understand what does it mean. <laughs> we believe in many prophets. We do not believe only in Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad is one of the prophets, not only prophet. Muslims believe in all the prophets of God. So all the prophets are from Adam to Prophet Muhammad. In our tradition, it is said there were 124,000 prophets. 124,000 prophets. That means in every place, in every country, in every region, there were prophets of God. God did not leave any people without someone among them, rise up and a nice person, good person who will teach about God. So prophets were great teachers, great people. And in every community, in every nation, there were great people, very pious people, very righteous people. From where they got this righteousness? From God. So Islam recognizes goodness in every place. Goodness in among all people. And uh, there are only 25 prophets mentioned in the Quran. Quran, of course, does not mention all the 124,000 prophets in a huge book. <laughs> so it does not mention all of them but only mentioned few of them. But most of the prophets that are mentioned in the Quran are the same that are mentioned in the Bible. Some of them are not mentioned in the Bible, but most of them are mentioned in the Bible. So we believe in Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Ishmael, Jacob, Joseph, Jonah, Lot, many other prophets who are mentioned in the, in the Bible, or mentioned in the Quran. And similar stories. So there are a lot of similarities between the biblical teachings and Islamic teachings. Because the three religions 
Judaism, Christianity and Islam are family religion. Just like Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism are family religion. You have Shintoism and Confucianism and Taoism, similar. So there are some religions, so there are similarity in religion, the family religion. So this Islam, Judaism and Christianity are family religion, coming from the old family of Abraham. So Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet. We believe that he was the last one. The Muslims don't accept any prophet after Prophet Muhammad. That is the final one. And uh, all prophets were human beings. They were teachers, role models. Jesus was the great prophet of God. You know, a lot of people think that Muslims don't believe in Jesus. Muslims do believe in Jesus. We honor him. We respect him. We believe uh, that uh, he was born uh, his virgin mother, his mother was a virgin. We believe that he had miracles. We believe in his, uh, in his, um, you know, in the, in the gospel that God gave him. We believe that he is the Messiah. We believe in his second coming. He is the only Messiah. Now Jewish people believe in the Messiah, Christians believe in the Messiah, and Muslims believe in Messiah. Jewish people say, yes, there will be Messiah, but not Jesus. They say, Messiah is going to come, but not Jesus. They, so they did not accept Jesus as the Messiah. Christians say, Jesus is the Messiah and he's going to come. Muslims say, Jesus is the Messiah and he's going to come. So Muslims and Christians agree on the same Messiah. So there are some, some lot of similarities here. So Muslims believe in his uh, highly respected and honored. The only thing that Muslims do not say about Jesus is that he is the son of God. Not because of Muslims don't respect him, we respect him, but they don't believe that God has any son or daughter. In Islam, God is God. God is not a human being begetting children or creating children. God is creator. God has created everything. God created Jesus. So Jesus is not uh, son of God, but Jesus is the creator, crea created by God. Hmm? He, is, he is one of God's creation. Great, great, great person, but is still created by God. And all people are created by God. Some of them are higher, some of them are lower, but still he created by God. So there is no one who has um, God in, his, in him. I mean, you can be very close to God, but God is God. So that's the Islamic understanding. That's why Muslims believe in, 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 in the transcendence of God. That God is, remains God. God does not become man, man does not become God. But they can come very close to each other. We believe in God's guidance and prophets. That is, uh, God has been guiding people. And there were many uh, scriptures, Torah, we believe, Zabur, Psalms of David, we believe, Gospels, we believe, and Quran, we believe. So we believe in all these scriptures. And because we find a lot of similarities between them. Quran is the final book preserved through memorization and writing. We believe that Quran was all preserved without any change. Other books went through some changes, but not Quran. Quran remained as it was, as it came through Prophet Muhammad, and this is the way how it is kept. A lot of people, millions of people, know it by heart. The whole Quran, they know it by heart. If all the copies of the Quran are, are gone, and if Terry John burns some copies of the Quran, Quran will still remain. Why? Because people know it by heart. Little children know it by heart. From the beginning to the end, the whole Quran. So the Quran cannot be burned. Quran cannot be uh, wiped away. <laughs> Quran is, remains in the heart of the people. As long as the human beings are on this earth, there will be Quran. Uh, so this is the, and this is the way how it was. This is the Muslim tradition that uh, every Muslim memorizes some Qur'an 
And there are many, many who memorize the whole Quran from the beginning to the end. All of it, without any little mistake. Even if somebody makes a slight mistake, people will correct him. <laughs> and uh, during the month of Ramadan, in the month of fasting, we listen to the whole Quran in our prayers. We stand up and somebody recites and the whole Quran is recited. Every day, one thirtieth part. So in 30 nights, we listen to the whole Quran. And this is all done through memory, not from reading the book, or from the memory. What the Quran teaches, basic message of the Quran, first of all, the Quran says that righteousness, religion is not that you turn your face this way or that way. The religion is that you believe in God in the last day, the angels, the books, the messenger, spend, give charity, uh, uh, take care of the orphans and the needy and the wayfarer and those who ask and ransom the slaves and pray and be patient, fulfill your contracts. This is what the religion is all about. What is religion? Religion is not just rituals. Religion is certain way of life. Religious freedom. The Quran says, let there be no compulsion in religion. You then cannot force somebody to become Muslim. So there should not be any, any compulsion, any force in religion. To, we, to, to you we send the scripture and truth confirming the scripture that came before it. So judge between them by what Allah said and follow not their vain desires. To each among you we have prescribed a law in an open way. If Allah had so willed, he would have made you a single people. If Allah wanted, he would have made everybody Muslim. But Allah left it to the people. So there is no, God did not force people, so why should we force? We cannot force people to become Muslim. Because God did not do that. If God wanted, he would have made everybody Muslim, but he did not. So people have freedom of, of, of religion, freedom of choice. Universal human family, that's what the Quran says, O mankind, we created you from a single person, created of like nature his mate, and from both of them is spread out countless men and women. That means we are all one family. Whether born in India, in China, in America, in Africa, any place. We all come from Adam and Eve. And there is only one Adam and Eve. So we are all brothers and sisters. We are all one family. Because our parents are the same. Justice even to those who show hate and animosity. Quran says, O you who believe, stand out firmly for God as witnesses for fair dealings and let not the hatred of others to make you to swerve to wrong and depart from justice. Be just that is next to piety. So you must be very just. Protection and safety of every human life. If anyone kills a person, unless it be for murder or for spreading mischief in the land, it would be as if he killed the whole humanity. And if anyone saved a life, it would be as he saved the whole humanity. Killing one person is like killing everybody. And saving one person is like saving everybody. So murder is a very, very bad thing. You should not do, take care of, take any, any life. Rather, you should take care of life. And then also, um, justice, benevolence, kindness for everybody. God commands justice, doing good, liberality to kith and kin, forbids shameful deeds, injustice, aggression, human dignity. We have honored the children of Adam, provided them with transport on the land and the sea, overcome evil with good, make your enemies your friends. Good deeds and bad deeds are not equal, repel with what is better. Then those between you and him, are the hatred will become as if you are friends. If somebody does something wrong to you, do good to that person. This is the way you can win the heart of the person. You can make your enemies your friends. This is in the chapter number 41, verse 34. Pluralism. O mankind, we created you from a single pair of a male and a female and made you nations and tribes that you may know each other. So notion, God made nations and tribes for what? Not because one nation is better than the other nation or one color is better than the other color. No, so that you may know each other. The best of you 
Verily, the most honored of you in the sight of God is the one who is the most righteous of you. Good person is not because a person has white color or a person has uh, some this race or that race. No, a person because of his character. Because he is pious, righteous. And good relations with all people. People of all faiths. Whether they are Christians, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, any people. You must have good relations with all people. The Quran says, God forbid you not with regard to those who fight you not in your faith and drive you not out of your homes from dealing kindly and justly to them. If somebody is not fighting you because of your religion, be nice to that person. If somebody does not expel you from your home, well, you should be nice regardless of his religion. But if he fights you, and if he expel you from your home, then you should be careful about that person. Then you should take care of yourself. Be pro protect yourself. That's what the Quran says. God only forbids you with regard to those who fight you for your faith and drive you out of your home and support others in driving you out from turning to them for friendship and protection. Those who turn to them in these circumstances do wrong. If you turn to those people who are trying to fight you and you say, oh, protect us, because how can they protect you? Because they're fighting you. How can they protect you? So you have to be careful about that. So that's, These are the, some of the basic, basic mass principles that Quran gives. Of course, there are many other things that are there. So we believe that all human beings are created, created by God. Human beings are God's deputies on this earth. In Islam, the belief is that <coughs> God created all things and human beings are the highest creation of God. God has honored the human being and they are God's representatives on this earth. And they are equal. There is equality among all human beings. Nobody is a superior race or inferior race. So there is no caste system in Islam. And freedom of all people. No discrimination because of the gender, race, color, or nationality. Men and, men and women should not be discriminated. Uh, people of different colors should not be discriminated. People of different races should not be discriminated. People of different nationalities should not be discriminated. And uh, we believe that there is no compulsion in religion. There is no compulsion. Religion is free. You cannot force somebody to become Muslim. Everybody has uh, a right to, to practice their religion the way they want. <laughs> then another important thing that we believe is that this life is not the only life. We believe in the life after death. So we have very strong belief in the life after death. We believe that every person shall taste death. There's nobody who can say, I'm not going to die. Everybody is going to die. That's the way how God created the people. People are born, grow old, then die. Some die even before that. So death is the certainty. And also we believe that this world will come to an end. This is a finite world. This is not an eternal world. This is a finite world and this world will come to an end. And then we believe that God will resurrect every person. So we believe in the resurrection. In Hinduism, in Jainism, in uh, Buddhism, the belief is that reincarnation. You are born and you are reborn and born and reborn. In Islam and Judaism and Christianity, there is a resurrection. You die and then you will be resurrected. And the day of judgment will take place. True faith and righteous life will bring God's blessings and safe passage to heaven. Those who have faith and live righteous life, go to heaven and have eternal life. Those who denied God, lived sinful life, did not repent, they may be punished in the hellfire. So we believe in the heaven and hell. And uh, the final judgment is of course in the hand of God. Only God decides. Nobody can decide who is going to heaven, who is going to hell. Only God. No imam, no leader can say, 
Okay, brother, you will go to heaven, and you go to hell. No. That's not the job of the people. It's only in the hand of God. We worship. In Islam, there are five pillars, five important principles of faith. First of all, you have to declare your faith. You say there is no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. And then you pray five times a day. Charity, help the poor and the needy. Fast during the month of Ramadan. This is the ninth month of the lunar calendar. And go to pilgrimage to Mecca. Once in your life, at least, to make a pilgrimage. Then Islam also emphasizes morality. Truth, honesty, sincerity, chastity, humbleness, generosity, love, kindness, justice, charity. All of these are very, very important values that Islam has emphasized. And uh, this is to urge all people, not just to Muslims. Muslims, non-Muslims. Every person you have to be. Show truth, honesty to every person, regardless of race, color, gender or religion. Besides that, Islam also has certain rules and laws. This is called Sharia. Sharia is the Islamic law. So today you are hearing a lot about Sharia. Maybe you will have some questions about Sharia. Sharia means the way. Like the Jewish people say halakha. <clears throat> so it's a, way, it's a way. A way of life. And this way of life is not limited to worship. Everything. Your food. Your clothes. Your business. Your family. Your marriage and divorce. All of this is under the, there are certain rules given for that. <coughs> Ethical and moral rule. <coughs> so they are based on the Quran and the Sunnah. And the consensus of the scholars. Then new issues come. Not everything is in the Quran and the Sunnah. When the new issues come, then the scholars sit down and make ijtihad. Ijtihad means new thinking. New interpretation. A lot of issues were not there. And we have to answer them for that. Uh, what do you say about test tube babies? What do you say about stem cell research? What do you say about surrogate motherhood? What do you say about organ transplantation? What do you say about blood transfusion? Oh, hundreds of issues that are there. So they, you don't find them in the Quran, in the Hadith. So you have to answer them. You look at them and answer them for that. But the uh, important thing is justice, mercy, human welfare, and wisdom. These are the very, very important things that you have to keep in mind. Whatever the law, the law must be just, merciful. It takes care of the human well-being, and also it must be wisdom, wise thing. And protection of life, mind, family, property, and spirituality. These are the things that are very, very important in Islamic law. So Sharia is uh, for this purpose. Then, uh, among the Muslims, there are different groups. We have Sunnis, Shi'is, and Sufis. Sunnis are the majority of Muslims. They're about 90%. They believe in the Quran and Sunnah. That's why they're called Sunnis. So for them, the two, two sources, Quran and Sunnah. But then they have various schools of interpretation. For law. So you have Hanafi, Shafi, Maliki, Hanbali, some other groups, you have that. So these are schools of law, schools of interpretation. They are not sects, just uh, interpretation. Uh, slight interpretation, the way they, they read the Quran and the Hadith and then they give you interpretation of that. So yes, there are different opinions. There is a variety accepted in Islam. She is, is the second largest group. But 10%. They believe Quran, Sunnah and Imams. They say that the Quran is the source, Hadith is the source. And then they say after the death of the Prophet, there were 12 people from his family who were the most important ones. So they believe in those uh, 12 people. Some of them believe in 12 and some believe in 7. So you have uh, 12 hours and 7 hours, 
and that is, so you have different groups among the Shi'is. Sunnis are all over the world. Shi'is are mostly in Iran, in, uh, uh, some in Iraq, in Lebanon, uh, and then in other places also. There was about 10 percent, almost 150 million. So, and Sufis are mystics. You will find among Sunnis and Shi'is both. What the Sufis do? Sufis believe in more spiritual things. They believe that uh, you must have your special connection with God through a sheikh, through a teacher. And you have the special masters who will teach them. So there are different schools, so there are different uh, sheikhs and the teachers and their orders. They have that, like your mystical orders in Catholic, Catholic Church, for example. You have a lot of mystical orders. Benedictine order, Franciscan order and other orders, you have that. So in a similar way you have in Islam. You have Sohrawardi, Jilani, Rifai, Shadili, Molavi, Naqshbandi, and many others you have like that. Okay? So this is uh, some facts about Islam. That is some of the things that I explained to you. Uh, but then there is a lot of propaganda against Islam. There is a lot of uh, hate material that you will find today. Um, Some of them, for example, you will find that in the media. Islam is a terror organization, Michel Malkin said that. Islam is a terror organization. Here is the Glenn Book, Beck. First elected Muslim, uh, he asked the first elected Muslim congressman, Keith Ellison, prove to me you are not, you are not working for the enemy. You know, he became a congressman, elected, and he says, you just tell me that you are not going to work for the enemy. A man born and raised in America. He's Afro-American. And he tells me. And Coulter. Kill their leaders and convert them to Christianity. <laughs> See that? And this is considered as very nice, peaceful thing. Huh? Kill their leaders and convert them to Christianity. I don't believe Islam really can be reformed unless we recreate a totally new belief system. And then added, I don't see any difference between radical Islam and regular Islam. For them, all Islam is the same. Radical people, the, some of the crazy people, they say they are same thing as like other Muslims. So you mean, what, what, what do you mean? They say one and a half billion Muslims are radicals. Imagine if one and, one and a half billion people become radical, what will happen to the world? <laughs> Some other. Daniel Pipe criticized President Bush for suggesting in public that Islam is a peaceful religion. You know, President Bush said Islam is a peaceful religion. Daniel Pipe criticized President Bush. He said, All Muslims, unfortunately, are suspect. He wrote in a recent book that he added 10 to 15 percent of Muslims are militant. So, on the other hand, he said all Muslims are suspect, and then he said 10 to 15 percent are militant. What did that mean, 10 to 15 percent? That means 200 million people are militant. <laughs> the only good Muslim is a former Muslim. <laughs> this is Robert Spencer. He has become an expert on Islam. Huh? He writes that only good Muslim is a former Muslim. Sorry, you can't see all. Because this is the way how Islam is uh, shown. You see? Either you will find that Islam is uh, sensuous, pleasure, rich, haram, and all of these things. This is what they show about Islam. Or they say militant, angry, fighter. All this. Yeah? See that here? Or they will show that uh, this only, that they won't show their, their faces, they show their backs only. Huh? They don't say that in the end, this is the way they show them. They, here is death to the infidels. Kill, kill, kill. <laughs> Muslim woman. She crying for help. Here is another style of Muslim woman. <laughs> On the one hand they show this, then they show this, this. They say this.
So uh, this kind of depiction you will find that in our media, in our films. These are all taken from the films. These are the pictures that are taken from the Hollywood. Some uh, uh, some leaders say that. For example, the political leaders. If I see someone who comes in that got a diaper on his head and a fan belt wrapped around the diaper on his head, that guy needs to be pulled over. This is a former, former congressman. What means that some Arabs, of course, wear, you know, they have covered, so they are putting a diaper on their head. I fear that the next century we will have many more Muslims in the United States. This is the congressman Virgil says, I fear that there will be more Muslims in the United States. And the congressman Tancredo uh, is a Colorado, Republican of Colorado, he said, it is the result of the extremist fundamentalist Muslims, mm, you know, you could take out their holy site, host. You are talking about bombing Mecca? He said, yeah. That we should, uh, so he's suggesting, this congressman is suggesting, that America should go and bomb Mecca. And that will be a very peaceful thing. No? Some of the religious leaders. Here is the Reverend Franklin Graham, uh, Pat Robertson. Huh? These people are crazed fanatics. I want to say it now. I believe it is motivated by demon, demonic power. By the way, Islam is not a religion of peace. I believe it is a, it, uh, it is a very evil and wicked religion. Franklin Graham. Muhammad was a demon-possessed pedophile. Reverend Jerry Vines, former president of Southern Baptist Convention. I think Muslim Muhammad was a terrorist. I read enough of the history of his life written by both Muslims and non-Muslims to know that he was a violent man, a man of war. Jerry Falwell. Quran must be burned. Terry Jones, you heard about him already. So this is uh, the propaganda. This is the propaganda uh, that has been going on and on and on and creating a lot of fear. And we are using the word for that is Islamophobia. <laughs> Islamophobia. What is Islamophobia? It's, it's some kind of a racism. Uh, just like there's anti-Semitism. Now anti-Semitism is replaced with Islamism. Hmm? It's uh, Islamophobia. The fear of Islam, the hate of Islam. You look at the, 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 the movies, and Muslims and Islamic societies are despotic, backward, underdeveloped, tribal, promiscuous, deviant, irrational, mysterious, evil. This is the way how movies present Muslim societies. For example, you go and look at True Lies, Executive Division, The Siege, The Rules of Engagement, and many others. These are, in a very entertaining way, this is the message that is given to the masses. So, you find that. In the Arab thugs plan to ignite Los Angeles, killing millions. This is the way how the true lies, for example, say, shoot dead Palestinians like killer pigeons. Rules of Engagement, a film which justifies U.S. Marines killing Arab women and children. That is it's okay to do that. One person who, Jack Shaheen, who studied the TV Arabs, that means how the Arabs are, t are, are presented in the, in, on the TV and uh, also is, is called the real bad Arabs. Arabs have consistently appeared in American popular culture as billionaires, bombers and belly dancers. Arab Muslims are most often portrayed as fanatics who believe in a different God, who don't value human life as much as we do. They are intent on destroying us, that means the West, with their oil or with their terrorism. The men seek uh, to abduct and brutally seduce our women. They are without family and res reside in primitive place, the desert, 
and behave like primitive beings. The women are subservient, resembling black crows, or we see them portrayed as mute, somewhat exotic harem maidens. This is the way how the movies present the Arab society and the Arab people. And if anybody would go and see, <laughs> this is not uh, the, 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 the thing that the movies present. Why? This is the <coughs> tell you about uh, how much people know about Islam. Hmm? This is uh, some knowledge. And uh, this is very little knowledge and know nothing. So uh, Terry Jones, for example, he did not read the Quran, as was mentioned before. You see, 40% and, 40 and 23%. 63% of the people, they do not know much. This is the survey was done just two years ago by Pew Foundation about Americans' knowledge of Islam. Uh, and this is, uh, do you know any Muslims? 50% say yes, we know someone. And 47% say they don't know anyone. So if you have that kind of knowledge, then you can imagine how much will be the, the relationship. And this is the second largest religion of the world. And then what kind of um, image people will have in their mind. That means whatever the media says, people will accept it. Oh, this must be there because people don't know much. They don't know much about Islam. They have not met any Muslim. But if you go and visit Muslims, see them in their mosques, in their Islamic centers, in their homes, in their Muslim countries, then of course you have a different view. And those who have done that, they, they have a very different perspective. I'm not saying that there are no problems, problems are there, but at the same time, propaganda is also too much. So uh, I'll, I have some questions, I mean, something to explain about jihad, about uh, m women, and about uh, relations between Muslims and Muslims. So here is uh, there's a lot of discussion come today about jihad. What jihad is? The word jihad does not mean holy war. It's very very it's wrong uh, con concept that people say that jihad is a holy war. Because there is no concept of holy war in Islam. Concept of holy war comes from medieval Catholic tradition. When the crusades were, were sent. At that time they used the word holy war. Muslims never used the word holy war. War is not holy. War is uh, terrible. And you should avoid that as much as you can. But jihad means a struggle to do good things, to remove injustice and oppression. A struggle could be moral, spiritual, social, economic, or political. Now, war is possible. Islam is not against war, absolutely. Islam says, yes, sometimes war can be necessary, but it's only for the defense, defense of life, property, land, and freedom. You are not supposed to fight anybody to convert people, or to colonize the land, or to have half self-glory or power. And of course, jihad has nothing to do with terrorism. Terrorism is not jihad. You know, they're using the word for terrorist, jihadist. They're not jihadist. They're violent people. So uh, violence is not jihad. Terrorism is not jihad. Uh, this terrorism is terrorism, it's a terrible thing, it's a bad thing. That's why Muslims are fighting terrorists. And that's why in most of the Muslim countries, the Muslims are fighting them. And a lot of Muslims have given their life to, to, to protect their countries from this, this evil. Rules of, of war in Islam, Islam said do not begin hostilities, work for peace as much as possible. Islam says, fight only those who fight, no collective punishment, no com non-combatants should not be harmed, weapons of mass destruction should not be used. Very important point that it says. 
and stop hostilities as soon as the other party inclines to peace. As soon as the enemy is saying that let us surrender, let us have peace, you should have peace. Observe the treaties and agreements as long as the enemy observes them. So you have to observe the treaties. And for what women in Islam? You can have a lot of questions on that. But let me give you an idea about in Islam, women are equal to men. There is no, uh, no place in the Quran to say women are not equal to men. Respect and love. Islam says you must respect your mothers, sisters, daughters. Husband and wife should be very kind to each other. The Quran says the purpose of marriage is so that you may find peace and you find your love and caring and kindness towards each other. Islam emphasizes, of course, modesty in dress. Muslim women cover. Uh, and the covering is in the proper dress that you should wear. And then also when you go out in public, you should cover your hair. That is what is mentioned in the Quran. Some go too much and they cover even their face, but this is not required in Islam. So today all the debate that is going on in France about the, the face covering, actually it's a very small group of Muslims do that. You know, in France, there are five million Muslims. And they found out that only about 2,000 women who do cover their face. And most of them are French women, convert to Islam. <laughs> they are not Arab women, or they are not women from other places. They are French women who used to live very free lifestyle. Now they change completely. <laughs> they go from one side to another side. Sometimes. They want to do it because they want to get out of their previous lifestyle. So they do that. So some of them do it. So that's why more, many women who were interviewed yesterday on CNN, for example, were all French women. French women who are, who are demonstrating against it. <laughs> but if you go to the Muslim world, you know, you'll find a lot of women who do not cover their face. It's not required in Islam. But at the same time, People say, well, why to make a fuss about it? If somebody is covering their face, let them cover their face. This is their, jo this is their choice. Why, why to make an issue out of that? A small number of people, they do that, they do that. If you have any questions about uh, security, of course, in Islam, even a woman who covers herself, she must show her face if there is a question. She must show her face. So when she go to bank, when she go to post office, when she go to the airport, when she has a driving license, she should show her face. So she cannot. She, she cannot say I'm because I'm. I'm. I've covered my face. I cannot show my face. I cannot have my picture taken. Yeah, she has this. Um, so uh, modesty of dress is just to honor and protect women. Islam is a religion that emphasizes very much modesty. Good family. Do not have any uh, extramarital relations. Do not uh, observe your 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 personal morality. And then also emphasize that pre mistreatment of women is forbidden in Islam. Absolutely forbidden. You are not supposed to mistreat anyone. And uh, you have to be kind to to your mothers, your sisters, your daughters. Um, other women uh, as well. What about the relation between Muslims and non-Muslims? Sometimes people you hear that Muslims are they want to kill the non-Muslims. Or oh, Quran teaches that uh, in, kill the infidels. There is no place in the Quran that says that kill the infidels. There is no place. I challenge anybody to show me any ayah, any place that says that. Islam teaches that all human beings are one family, as I explained before. Because we come from the same parent, Adam and Eve. Basic dignity of all human beings. No compulsion in religion. Islam doesn't say that people can have no freedom to religion. Yes, everybody has free to religion. You cannot force people to become, uh, to take your religion. Whatever human rights, yes, universal human rights are accepted. And then a special recognition of people of the book, Jews and Christians. 
they are given very special recognition. They are called people of the book. That means you can have marriage, you can eat the food, and you can have special relations with them. Who will go to heaven? Only God knows. <laughs> Only God knows who will go to heaven. So that's something that God belongs to God, God's decision. Uh, but we are not supposed to say that we are going to go to heaven and other people go to hell. We don't say that. We simply say that we hope that God will accept us and accept our, our, our um, whatever humble thing that we do. And uh, we convey God's message to everyone. Thank you. نزل عليك الكتاب بالحق مصدقا لما بين يديه